so now let's talk about the I don't know what you classify them as the outside suck the outside kid in the shooter war Gears of War oh Gears of War see Gears of War <laughs> they, they, I, it's really dear to my heart the Gears of War is dear to my heart and like yeah like as far as the, the, the big shooters they're a little bit outside but as far as the third person shooters go they're the kings Gears of War is the king of third person shooters you know nothing's better than cutting off somebody's head with the chain cutting through somebody's body with the chainsaws curb on somebody on the ground so we've got new Gears of War was announced at the Microsoft press conference, which obviously diehard fans can be hyped about because, you know, nothing's, it's just, I don't know what's so fun about it. It's just the, the gore. It's just, oh. it, it satisfies a part of you. It satisfies all, a part of the human All I have to say is just, hitting yeah. wave 50 on Horde. The best game in the world. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Ah. Like Horde mode. Many many college college members in horde mode. Yes, I, I've had many many nights there. spent staying up with with friends just like horde. Hashtag horde progression it's, though. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> horde, horde progression, progression. On, on Gears of War. Like when you have to strategically like melee to like not use all of your ammo. Then when mm -hmm. to place like certain love the uh, the strategic little uh, turrets or walls, make sure you secure certain uh, the weapons from enemies. Like uh. Yeah, I, de I definitely. So I'm definitely excited for New Gears of War to come out. You know, with the whole console experience. The, the only thing I need to say is hyped. That's yes. yeah. So have y'all seen the this this new game, this new footage called Sea of Thieves? Sea of Thieves is I, I saw some footage of that. It reminds me of a better next gen Skies of Icarus. So, as far as a multiplayer that's, that's experience, if there is one, I think it's going to be... My only problem with Sea of Thieves was when they showed, like, the gameplay with the people. They had to have, like, gone on the streets to find the most annoying four or five people to play this game. <laughs> like, all those people that were well, playing the game, with... they were like, well, oh, we're going to crash the, the ship? Oh, we're not going to fit there. You know, like, they were so annoying, those that's little faces. <laughs> The it, game looks cool. Like, like I would cool. definitely love to play with a, with a bunch of our of our peeps that like do a sh a ship, you know, voyaging mm -hmm. together. But like, that's, God, those people are annoying. They did with Battlefield One though. Like, they got like ninety percent celebrities to play it. Snoop Dogg was high the entire Tyrese time. Tyrese was literally... playing it, fam. Tyrese. <laughs> yes. Like... He okay. Snoop about Dogg, Snoop can't Snoop play Dogg the game. was high and literally ran into a wall the entire time and was legitimately satisfied like it was a yes, decent game. <laughs> Tyrese crashed a biplane in battle. I was like, oh, they're they're playing with like some of the higher ranked people and the celebrities. I was like, you can obviously tell like it was actually. Dope. And they had like two or three YouTubers there, and that was it. Like, it it. Really, like the games, like okay, Sea of Thieves and Battlefield One, they're just they're trying to get more hype into it, which is to make sense. I mean, but no, nah, no, nah, nah. we we don't need don't, that. Don't get Snoop Dogg to play. Yeah, like you you want to you want to like showcase the mechanics See, of the game. Yeah, get someone who's good. Sea of know. Thieves. It'll probably a very it'll probably be a very good game to play with all of our peeps, get a bunch of people together and just, you know, mess around and do stuff. Um Scale bound? Scale bound hype? We're gonna scale down. We got more important than scale down, I think. Uh Say of the K sequel is coming out as well as a Dead Rising four, because they keep making those games. Well, Let's talk about Dead Rising separately for a second. Let's get, let's get Scalebound and I guess State of Decay. Scalebound is... I want to say it's going to be a little like... I don't know, honestly. I mean, you just basically fight giant dragons. Like... I mean, I think it's going to probably be okay. It'll probably be a decent... Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna like be a major blockbuster. I doubt we'll see a scale down too, probably. <laughs> probably. But I mean, maybe maybe three years down the road, and they're like, "Hey, we're doing a scale bound too," and then like minuscule amounts of nostalgia will roll in. Like it looks like a it looks like a glorified monster hunter, but probably not as yeah. good. 
It's like their version of Nintendo's monster. Like this dude's got, he's got Beats headphones on, like trying to fight a monster. Like, what is this? Like, no, I don't think it's gonna be a good game. It, it's legitimately Microsoft. <laughs> like, it's Microsoft. Yeah. And I, uh, I don't have anything on State of the K actually. So, shots if you wanna. State of the K. State of the K. I saw the trailer. I didn't, I didn't include anything in my little Twitch well, presentation, but. It's, just, it's, it's just another survival. Like, there's a ton of zombie games. It's the hard to like. The regular State of Decay, the first one, wasn't like there was three or four early access games on Steam that came out that were forty times better than State of Decay. Yeah. State of Decay, in my opinion, is just like a mid-range, like, run-the-mill zombie survival shooter. It's just getting like a second one out. Like, there's a ton yeah. of these out there. There's a much more better zombie survival games out there, in my opinion, than State of Decay. It's just that they're getting Did, a second one out there, probably fixing some bugs and, you know, what giving was, it a chance. What was ReCore? ReCore was, again, I don't think they actually gave us anything about what the game is about. ReCore was There's the game with, like, flu, the chick that looks like she's she's Rey from, from Force Awakens, almost. Oh, yeah. And, like, she has the different robots that, that like, fight with her. yeah. You, you stash you stash power in these new robots you find and kind of like build friends from there, and we don't know what the general story is about. But yeah, you're definitely a scavenger of some sort. So, I mean, we'll, we don't know. The, it's so we have we right? have it's Norman so. Reedus with Sony, and we have Ray with Microsoft. We have Ray <laughs> with Microsoft. I, can, I mean, if she really did, that was the vibe I was getting. But as Shasta mentioned and has to be mentioned is the return. Finally, that people have been asking for, of Frank West in Dead Rising 4. In Dead Rising 4. I'm not sure yes. if you guys, oh, did you guys play Dead Rising? I, I, I Dude, Frank West was a boss. Not only Frank West Dead was Rising better than Chuck two. Green. Yes, because Frank wasn't no bitch. And I also played him in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Frank was broken. I, so. can't, I can't even remember the, the guy's name, Dead Rising 3. What was his name? He was like, I think it was like Chuck or something. Like, what? Like, yeah. Chuck. No, Chuck it was, was two. Something like that. Something unforgettable. Something yeah. forgettable. Excuse me. But like Frank West. Yeah, it was. Frank West was a boss. I mean, just the bad is like him just sitting there, like browsing his cell phone, looking at different pictures and videos of him killing yeah. zombies, and <laughs> that's that's gonna be looking good. And from what they they showed oh. us, the different weapons you can put together, yeah. and the, the zombie catapult car. And I mean, okay, Dead Rising 3, to me, was just a precursor to what they could do. Because Dead Rising 3 was one of the games that I, I got to the very last mission, and I really did not have the energy to just finish the game. Didn't like, feel like doing it. Yeah, I, I really just didn't feel like, at that point, I had, like, over 300,000 zombie kills, and I was done. It's like, so what more I, is it to this game? And then with the Dead Rising nothing. Four, I, I'm guessing it'll be more because Dead Rising Three was a step up with the new engine and just more customization. But I'm I'm guessing Dead Rising Four is gonna be the real game. Like Dead Rising Four is gonna be where it's at. I also believe, if I read correctly, they all bring back the time system from Dead Rising One. Mm -hmm. Like the, like mm. the seven, which even though people I know hated it, 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 it no, they hated it because it was annoying sometimes, but it was a cool mechanic. But th I definitely think that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, this is a Horizon Three, and I, I like racing games and all the. Just gonna leave it at that. Yeah, I like I pretty much just tune out when it's the same day every year, new graphics. Dude. New style. But Gwent, though. But Gwent, though. Gwent. Okay. Gwent. For people who don't like the play style of Witcher, but people who have watched them play Gwent the minigame, the Gwent is going to be amazing. Dude, Gwent is like the most fun minigame I've ever played in like RPG ever. Like, uh, it's Gwent so like in-depth and like... Dude, you like go deck hunting IR in like the game, like mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Um, 
Minecraft is being cross played over PC. Minecraft was another was another game where they're like, let's try to get the most annoying people to play this game. Well, yeah. And show it to us. It's like Those are people who don't play. Hey, Halo Wars two. Mm-hmm. Didn't like one. Not looking at Didn't two. Didn't like one. Yeah, yeah I'm not really a fan one. of you, Halo you Wars. Think, was it was it like to you? Was it like they're trying to rip off StarCraft kind of? They they, they like it's a company that doesn't know how to make RTS games. That's made an RTS. Game. Yeah. I will, however, throw a, a different game out, out there that I am curious to see more about, and that is We Happy Few. That I'm not sh- I'm not sure if you guys. That was the weird one with like everyone, that's the one that everyone has like those, those smiley faces. The one where they the one with the guy beats a pinata, but it turns out to be a rat instead and. I saw some stuff like that. Yeah, I, I didn't go into too much, but I did see uh, the footage from it. To me, I don't know why. It gives me like a little, almost like an old school like Bioshock gameplay type vibe. Mm-hmm. So you can't like, go wrong with that. Society that's definitely wrong, you know, in the, in the long run. So we'll see. Oh yeah. I, okay. Kind of looks like. Okay. Um, that might be a good game to look out for. We'll see. Is that riddled in bugs? That's so true. Always riddled in bugs, but. But. Wait, won't. As Tekken a... 7. Only thing I have to say for Tekken 7. Akuma. That's, that's, I mean, that's basically all they, they gave Akuma. us. Akuma. Anyway. I was... Akuma and Heihachi. And then if. You have if you're an Xbox Live Gold member, you get Tekken Tag Tournament 2 for free, which Tekken Tag Tournament 2 was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty good. Um, are we missing anything? In terms of gameplay, I don't think so. Um, we okay. should now have to go to the Xbox Hardware. One Hardware. S. So oh, the slim. white Xbox I, Xbox One Slim is what 75 40 percent smaller. And three hundred dollars, so that's a huge thing because they're usually not three hundred dollars. And it's been a running joke between micro- my- Microsoft and Sony, where last E3, my- Sony came onto the stage when it was their turn to like release hardware, and they just all they said was two ninety nine and dropped the mic and walked away. See, here's the problem with Microsoft and the Xbox One S does look cool and it might be good for people who want to buy an X who don't have an Xbox One mm-hmm. it's cheap does everything it's... the same way smaller no, it would be it would be cool if it came with the slim controller because I know people like those a little better than the regular Xbox One controllers um, but the Project Scorpio console 4k gaming but again i really really am not giving the credit to microsoft to actually be able to produce 4k games with effectiveness here's the problem i have with and i'm not even getting into 4k gaming just yet but they go okay we're releasing this xbox one slim but then in the, the same breath next year we get Project Scorpio, I believe, is supposed to drop. Yep. So and that's the 4K. That's the 4K console. Yeah. So the so the problem is, do you shoot it, yourself they, in the it, foot? Because do you because do people buy the slim, or do they just hold out for Scorpio? Well, it, it's all developed on what like if you don't have an Xbox, obviously buy the slim. Like, I. Like I would, I would buy the slim anyway, just because it's three hundred instead of four hundred. But it's honestly Project Scorpio. The only real thing that you like, the only real satisfaction you'll get out of it is if you have a four K monitor, um, or a four K TV. And I'm not saying you need a four K TV to run the four K console. But you honestly, you're not gonna get much more satisfaction with just the console than if you had the console and the TV. 
So if you're not going to get a 4K TV or 4K monitor, I wouldn't bother with this Project Scorpio. I, I mean, also the game said, how are they going to supply it with the games as far as that? How's the, how's the support going to be as far as content release for Project Scorpio versus for the Xbox One? Well, I believe they mentioned that content is going to. Well, I think the I think the the console just upscales it, so. Yeah, yeah. It's... I believe it's not going to have exclusive. I believe anything on the one will also be on Scorpio, I think. I, I just, I'm just wondering how well it's going to upscale and if it's uh, the upscale is going to have any issues. Because I don't want to like have a console that's supposed to upscale my games to 4K and then play a game and it for, for it to mess up in the game to be in like 720p. Like, because the Xbox has those issues where all the games are supposed to run at 1080 and you you get it running at like stupid resolution when it shouldn't happen. Yeah, so, so we'll see. We we also talk about since we we talk about games for systems, the whole Xbox Play Anywhere idea. Well, basically, if you, you know, if that was if if you buy a game for the Xbox, it it you can play it on the Windows Ten. And vice versa. Mm. So basically, okay. you don't you don't have to. On demand gaming. So like, if you buy a game for Xbox, you don't have to buy it again for Windows 10. And it, I believe they even copies. It, it, you can even pull Do in the same thing from PC to your save file. You see, my issue with that is, is I think they're trying to fix the mistake of when they first released the console. They said there's no way you'll be able to like do used games. That whole fiasco was, yeah, that's... <laughs> then they, yeah, they got rid of so it, and that, they brought it back, and... Like the, that just seems like they're trying to fix the issue and make it a little better to say sorry. Um, which, by the way, if you saw that Sony PlayStation commercial, that was hilarious. Like, they dumpstered Microsoft. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it or not, Rix. I did not. It, it was basically... After they, after Microsoft said that you wouldn't be able, like, use games wasn't a thing, like, giving your game to somebody else wasn't a thing so they could play it, basically Sony spent a bunch of money on a commercial that was two head directors that walked out and it popped up and it said how to share games on PlayStation 4. And one of the directors literally just handed the game to the other director and said, yay. And then that was the end of the commercial. Wow. <laughs> but I believe that's everything for Microsoft, which then brings us to the age-old question of who wins. Uh, personally, I go with Sony just for just sheer content, new and revamped titles about coming out. The most content definitely announced was for Sony. Most promising titles also was for Sony as well. I, I believe. I so for... I think that they were my pick for like the uh... quote-unquote win. I go for Sony only because not only was their presentation good with the orchestra and such, but it's the amount of games they released with the ratio of how many games everyone's hyped for, and the answer is pretty much all of them. So I'm going to go with Sony. I think Sony definitely had the better press conference. I think the and Sony would technically have won then in that case for E3. So I think Sony's AS have a small caveat in that a lot of the games we know nothing about really. So we don't really know what to expect. Yep. So they could be good, they could be misses whereas Microsoft they kind of gave us a bit they, more about the games. Mm-hmm. But it, it, a lot of them may not have, have been standouts, but we at least got a bit more ideas. Yeah. yeah. Xbox was, you know, Phil Spencer doing his thing. As he always does. Pretty much. So then to basically, we'll wrap this entire show up and go over... Let's let's start with the best game from E3 or the 
pretty much the best game that you guys think is going to be coming out of E3. Uh, E3. Man, that's a tough one. I have down, for me, honestly, I'm a Legend of Zelda fan. I think Breath of the Wild, as far as bringing back the nostalgia factor and just adding on top of that and just perfecting a genre, will, I mean, as far as being just consistent, will be the best game of E3, I think, that comes out. Outside of that, um, I'm for I'm for the uh, Last Guardian Sea of Thieves, uh, personally. But that's my opinion as far as my picks coming out. Um, my most hyped games um going to be God of War and Detroit. That being said, I'm going to go with shots and saying that the most successful game that's coming out of E3 is going to be the Zelda game. Uh, it's... They they gave everybody the gameplay that was needed. They it's well presented and on the way they set it up, the way the gameplay is gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic. Uh yeah, Zelda obviously is gonna be big because you have the fan base there to really drive it. Um mm-hmm. I think obviously we have to go for games like Battlefield. That's gonna probably be another big hit even though Theoretically, well, it wasn't released at E3. Yeah. I guess. Um, one game I personally think is going to be good is Dead Rising 4. Just because I'm a fanboy of Dead Rising. Mm-hmm. Frank West. Uh, what, what, Lethal, what Lethal just said is everything on Xbox showed off isn't coming out for an, another 18 months. So it's... Sony beats it on the timeline. It's... And Wait uh, no, I think the other way around. Everything no. for, from everything for Xbox is coming yeah. out. No. S- no. Sony Sony didn't give us a date on any on half the games. Sony Sony just most of their stuff is coming out by like January. Or November. Ha, ah, we don't even know what the game's about. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get I d I didn't really find dates which was I guess part well, maybe of the not issue. The Kojima game. Kojima games probably gonna take another two years, to be honest. Like that's just that's just how Kojima works. But Detroit's probably gonna come out probably November, not November, like January, February. Um, maybe they'll surprise us and put out Kingdom Hearts three this February, like they said they were going to do last year. Maybe. I I wouldn't uh. I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't no, count I wouldn't. on it, no, but yeah. But maybe. Maybe they'll surprise us. I mean, I think something. Like, there's nothing really super stands out that was brand new released. Games like Battlefield, Mass Effect. I'm I think just, are going to have good. Dishonored. Gonna my vote's just going to go for Detroit only because I think it's, from what I've seen, it's fantastic. It could be absolute crap, but. But it could not be. Actually, but here, so it, actually, it I'm going to put my vote. For Days Gone, I Days think Days Gone, Gone looks like yeah. it could be a good zombie game. Yeah. So then let's flip. Uh, the... I think the back market zombie is saturated too much, but I, so I'll, I'll keep my judgments out until I see more footage of all these that come out. But well, people love be... zombies, so they're gonna keep putting out zombie all right. games. So then let's flip the script and go for the worst picks of E3. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, fam. For for start. Well, okay. Disregard Call of Duty Infinite Warfare because it instantly went. <laughs> that's true. That that kind of that that's gonna be. Okay, so what possibly could be worse on top of that? Um, I mean, this is just speculation, but just based on what I'm seeing, I think some of these VR projects are gonna fail. Honestly, I think some of these you VR endeavors are gonna Four fail. And Doom's gonna fail. Like, not necessarily Doom, but some of these ones, like maybe the Star Trek one, maybe the Batman one. VR. Well, this the, Batman when Batman Arkham Knight didn't do good on the PC in the first place. Like Arkham Knight on the PC failed miserably, and they did absolutely nothing about it. Um, that being said, the Star Trek one isn't meant to be a full game. The Star Trek one is meant to be like the games that are out for VR now. They're meant to be like these little just precursor to what VR is going to be. So it's. I'm my worst pick from an actual real game. Uh, it's probably gonna be Titanfall. I'm not gonna yeah, give Titanfall. Titanfall. I'm not gonna give Titanfall the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, definitely. 
Because there's, really there's really not much they can do to make it better besides adding more stuff and hoping people get attracted to it. I want to go out of the limb. My vote is going to be steep. I, steep, probably. I yeah, think yeah, hype versus what we're actually going to get and do from it. Like, bait, like well, sorry, hype not from people, hype from Ubisoft themselves compared to everyone else. Well, I it doesn't live in the front side. Realize is that like the games are gonna come out from Ubisoft and they're gonna play it and be like, why is this bad? And they're gonna be like, oh wait, Ubisoft is shit. And then that's gonna be the end of the conversation. Well, well, I, honestly, I, I'm gonna say steep because I think steep will work for what it's supposed to be, and that's fine. Uh, it's not gonna be yeah. good, but it will be what it's supposed to be, a snowboarding game. I, yeah, but like the, you, like, like I said, you can't make a game just because. You live in the French Alps. Like no, nobody needs to care about the name before the mountains that the guy's talking. Like it's a, it's the same mountain to everybody. It's not gonna. Yeah, it's the same mountain. Yeah, like, really. So, eh, you have a point there. Sure. And then the last, I guess, nomination we have to give Honestly, out. Honestly, from from a resources standpoint, I'd say probably the Skyrim remaster. Mainly because you think that's gonna be bad. I I think it's it's gonna be well received, but it's not it's not gonna be the most effective. Like when most of your player base who constantly plays Skyrim, who play who has played Skyrim for thousands of hours, are on the PC, it, it's a waste of resources to put out Skyrim remastered for the 20% that play on consoles. And I mean it's good for it's it's good for Bethesda only because it holds people over until they decide they want to they want to put out another Elder Scrolls. True. And we'll see when that happens. So probably the next 2 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking 2018. Well, they'll they'll announce it at E3 at 2018, and then another two years after that until it comes out. All right. So then our final nomination, as I was saying, our sleeper pick, a game that isn't one of the big franchises out there or the the new IPs under the radar. Sleeper pick's gonna be Last Guardian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last guy's yeah. also gonna be good. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I, I, sea of Thieves I, as well. Like I said, that's my sleeper as well. Bad Sea of Thieves. I'm. Uh, I'm also have to. I have to toss my coin into South Park. Facts of Behold. South Park. We'll see how it's executed. I mean. I mean, it looks like it could be. Like, like I'm. I don't know. I think it's. It's gonna. Be, it's gonna be fun. But that might just be me wanting. Why you're wanting it to be good. But yeah, I believe that pretty much covers everything for E3. We hit a lot of the topics, went over a bunch of games, a bunch of consoles. We went down memory lane. Somehow we ended up talking about Pokemon and Magic. Yeah. Uh, somehow <laughs> went off the, topic there just a little happen. bit. But yeah, so I'd like to, again, thank Peach, thank Shots for... Coming on here, talking about thank, the games. Thank you for inviting us to do this wonderful podcast. Yes. And, and yeah, sure in the future. We'll that is true. So, so well, there's plenty of topics out there to discuss. There's plenty of things. I know. I think Shots had some ideas for things to discuss. I have some as well. I have so, a couple. Exactly. So there's things um, plenty to discuss. That won't be as grand as E3, so... Work on getting a fourth for a guest here. In some of the podcasts. So a lot of the same things to come up on the podcast. Definitely. Correct. So again, I'd like to thank everybody who was watching. Thank everybody listening to the RNG podcast. And stay tuned for future episodes, future projects to be released 
and I hope you guys enjoyed hearing our thoughts on E3 and all the games about it.